Tango friends, Annie here in my home studio in SS Park, Colorado. Today we're going to learn a gridded pattern for a change. We've gotten a little bit away from those metered gridded patterns and they're yet so important to fill in backgrounds and in all kinds of different Zentangle projects. This is a really cool pattern. That's how I would describe it most. It's not beautiful, it's just so cool. It's very much like a Celtic knot. Uh, reminds me a little bit of Huggins, but in a different way. And if you shade it and color it in certain ways, you have different meta patterns that emerge that are just really, you just can't stop looking at them. They're so cool. So this pattern is called Rush Hour. And Rush Hour, I think, is by Sue Hines. At least that's what I found on Smart Google. She is a quilter and she wrote a book called Philharmonics. And in this book, she shows all kinds of patterns that are um, background patterns for, for quilting, right? So she does do a YouTube demo and shows how to sew this pattern. Well, today we're gonna learn how to draw it. And I know there are other people out there who have shown how to draw you a uh, rush hour, but I want to share with you some little tricks that help me internalize it so that I can just do it anytime without looking at my step out. So let's get started on rush hour. I think you're really gonna like this one. So before we start, let me show you my tangle tag. You know that I have created these tangle tags and they're for sale on my bowtangle.net page. It's a way that I devised to help me organize and archive all the hundreds of tangles that I want to step out and keep and be able to find quickly. So I have them all on a little ring and I put them in alphabetical order and it's, it's a really easy tool. You can take a subset with you if you're working on a particular project, um, just take them off the hook or off the ring and there you have it. And I just spilled water on this one, but this is my tangle tag step up. So you can go ahead and, uh, do a screenshot of this if you'd like and see, um, make your own. Um, my, I got the name of the person who stepped it out wrong. I, she did a YouTube on this and this is Sue Heinz's um, pattern, I believe. So that's what we're gonna go with. And on the back, this is, this is where I'm saying, I have a place for you to put notes and then put samples. And these few little notes are what keep me from having to look at this tag because I, it's easy to remember how to internalize it. So the first is you start with your grid always in graphite. The second is you alternate the directional lines coming off the center circles. You need to keep them consistent. And these lines are arranged left on the left, they go up and on the right of the circle, they go down. So that's what I mean here. On the left of the circle, they go up on the right of the circle, they go down. And then you alternate your pattern and you turn it and it's the same exact step. On the left of the circle, you go up and on the right of the circle, you bring your line down. So that keeps me remembering exactly what I have to do. I don't find this to be a very difficult tangle at all. It looks so complicated and so convoluted and yet it's really pretty simple and I'll show you. So let's get uh, going on our bijou tile. This is smaller so we can finish sooner and you can get onto your project. I am gonna start with corner dots like we do with an original, or uh, you know, the Zentangle step out. Making a border. And inside this some 
semi somewhat of a square, I'm going to try to divide this up equally into thirds. You can do fourths, but I don't want to be here all day, so I'm just going to try to equally divide them into thirds. Got to kind of eyeball it. Turn it, same thing. So we want to create little squares as equal a grid as you can get by hand. And so that is where we're going to use as a guide for placing our first step, which is just little circles in the center. You don't want them too big, but you do want them large enough to make a statement. This is exactly how we start our uh, Celtic knot patterns when we're doing Celtic knots. It's really hard for me not to cover up my hand or what I'm drawing on this teeny tiny surface. So that's why I'm turning my tile a lot to get it in an orientation that you can see. So here's that, that um, rule. Here's our circle and we're going to go kind of drive around the circle and bring a line up on the left like that. Drive around the circle, bring our line down on the right. We're going to skip because we're alternating. Nothing there. We're going to do the same thing. Drive around, up on the left, down on the right. Skip. Up on the left, down on the right. And then we're going to just turn our tile and do the same thing on the, on the ones that are left. Always remember, up on the left, I like to drive around the circle, get a jumping start, and up. Down. And these are our guides for the next step, which is basically making arcs on either side of those lines. We're going to do like an aura line. So we're going to start about here, go around the circle and aura that line. And I like to count my lines because you want them sort of to meet up um, here. This line should meet up with this line under the bridge. And you get that by counting them and doing them all the same. So one, I find that on this small surface, one, two, three is just about perfect. You will have a little corner here that we're going to be ending up uh, filling in the negative space with black. So same thing, one, that one was kind of wonky. I'm probably going a little bit too fast. You should take your time. This is a demo. Really do take your time to get it right. Nice and slow, very even. And now we're going to turn and do f finish that square in the opposite direction. And now we're going to turn our tile and do the same thing for the other uh, rows. And this is where you want to see that these lines sort of meet up. I know you can't be perfect. This is hand drawn and it doesn't really matter. But this makes it so believable that this strand is going under this one. This pattern is very much in its fragment way like the pattern Verve. It's a Zentangle pattern called Verve, V-E-R-V-E. -E. And you do it the same way, but without a grid, and you do it free-flowing with these wiggly lines. You make these lines wavy instead of straight. So look up Verve. It's a beautiful pattern, too. See, I'm trying to meet this one with this one. It always helps to look at the spot that you're going to try to meet up with. And 
there is a small grid of our pattern rush hour. And now we're going to just fill in these background, the, all the circles and also these areas here, the negative space. We're going to fill those in black. I'll do that and I'll be right back. When you're filling in like that, it's best to take a larger pen tip size. I have a pen here that I'm grabbing an O3 or a graphic would work really well. So it's already looking really cool, huh? So now we want to look at this. Let me get my pencil or my tortillon. If you look here, follow this. This is like a, a square, a rounded square a track or a buckle, a shoe buckle or a belt buckle. And then here would be half of another belt buckle. Here's another full belt buckle. Do you see that meta pattern that's forming? Let's look at it in another way. There's another meta pattern forming you can see easily here. This whole thing here makes kind of a flower. Do you see how that's like a flower here? This would be the center. These would be the, the petals like this. So there's all kinds of different patterns you're seeing in here um, if you just kind of change your focus of them. And it's really cool. So now we're going to just shade this um, with our 2B graphite. Basically, we, don't, we want to look at this as a overpass and this is the underpass. On the underpass we're going to add some graphite and then we're going to blend that out. So it really looks like, this is very much like our shading of Halibaut, really looks like this is the resting on top and this is going underneath. We do this a lot with the Celtic knots as well. So here's an overpass and an underpass. Basically, we're going to just be putting graphite on all of these joints, kind of, for lack of a better word. I'm not really sure. I like to think of this as an overpass and an underpass because our tangle is named Rush Hour. And what it does, it makes, makes the laces or these tracks look like they're weaving over and under. You could shade it a little differently in that if you're looking at this as a square, we would, we would only shade the inside of the square. I like shading both sides. I think it makes it more dramatic. There's Belina drinking. She always keeps me company when I'm doing these or working in my studio in general. Okay, I think I got them all. I'm sure I'll see when I rewatch this that I forgot something, but this is a demo, so be kind. there is our shaded rush hour. Isn't that so pretty, so cool? I want to show you a few of my examples, but first let's take a look at um, my notes again. I did have one more important note and I said this pattern would work really well with a sparkle. And a sparkle is nothing more than a break in the lines that you're, you're auraing. You break the line and that creates a natural highlight. So I did a little example here. You can see the shaded one is a row where I use sparkle. Do you see? That's like, it really does look like it's sparkling. I just, when I was doing my aura line, I start, stop, break, start, start, stop, break, and start. So that is a natural highlight. And especially if you have like 
four or five of these aura lines. This is a very small tile, but if you have a larger tile, you'll really see that highlight, that sparkle coming through. So that's what that means. And let me show you on this one, you can really see, I used uh, the colors of the rainbow for this. And so here's one of the colors. It's like that buckle, right? Here's another buckle, but it's weaving up, under, over, under, over. So you want your lines to look like they're undulating under and over. Then here we have our yellow and then our green. So each of these buckles would be a different color. And I started another one of these just with two colors so that you could really see it. Haven't finished it yet. I still need to add another layer of color and also um, some white highlights. But you can really see those buckles very well in this one. So here it is in a traditional Zentangle tile like I do on a daily basis. I love this. It's so much fun, this background. And then I did another one here that's um, fun to look at. Pretty large. So I'm going to have to move up. It's in a sketchbook. So this is a kind of also a traditional Zentangle tile where I used a string of a tree contour. And there is Rush Hour. Here on this one you can really see that kind of floral shape, that flower petals in there. So I can't wait to see what you all come up with because I know how you are. There's some incredible students of mine out there and CZTs who are watching these tutorials and they come up with really amazing pieces. So do post them to my Facebook page and um, that's Annie's Botangle Alumni. I can't wait to see you next week. Bye bye now. If you like these lunchtime tutorials, please give them a thumbs up and subscribe to my YouTube channel. I also invite you to check out my website for classes that I have scheduled or to purchase my tangle tags for your favorite step outs. That's bowtangle.net. I'm leaving you with some other links too. Zentangle.com, where you can learn more about the Zentangle method from its founders, Rick Roberts and Maria Thomas. You can also visit their store there for a multitude of Zentangle paper tiles, tools, books, and kits. Tanglepatterns.com is that site I talk about where you can explore hundreds of tangle patterns, read about them, and get the step out, which is basically the deconstruction of the pattern. And finally, if you'd like to share your beautiful results with me and my student community, please join Annie's Botangle Alumni Facebook page. We're a private group where we inspire each other with our work, and offer tips and useful information about art and Zentangle.